there are many ways those can be used to deploy or to push a semantic endpoint protection client onto the Windows operating system. Some of them are supported by semantic endpoint protection technical support team and some are not. So the methods those are supported by semantic endpoint protection technical support team are migration and deployment wizard, find unmanaged computers, push deployment wizard for remote site deployment. Now the not supported methods are MSI packages, third party deployment, Altris, Active Directory, SMS, and any other way that you would like to use. There is one more method that we can use for the installation of Samantha Can Point, and that will be creating an image of the operating system with semantic endpoint protection installed in it. In this method, the normal issue that we face is client communication once the image is pushed on. And when we come across this issue, normally what we do is we delete the hardware ID from the registry that will be used by the SEP client to communicate with the semantic endpoint protection manager. Now we will take these methods one by one and I'll show you how these methods can be used. So the first method migration and deployment wizard this feature is installed with the semantic endpoint protection manager. Now we'll move to the test machine where I will show you how this method can be used. We are on the test machine. Now to go to migration and deployment wizard we go to start programs semantic endpoint protection manager and migration and deployment wizard. This will open up the migration and deployment wizard welcome screen. We have different options here. We can deploy the Windows client using this wizard. We can export a Mac installation package that can be installed on a Mac computer. We can migrate settings from uh, semantic antivirus version 10. We can migrate settings from semantic antivirus version 10 for Macintosh. I'll click on next. I'll get again the same four options. So as I'll be showing you how to use this wizard, I'll be taking the first method, deploy the Windows client. When I click on next, it will give me two options to specify the name of a new group. That means whatever I specify in here as a name of the group, it will be displayed in the semantic endpoint protection managers clients tab. The computer on which we install this package will report to that particular group that we specify as a name here. And the second option will be used in case we already have a package created and we want to use that package to push onto a client computer. So I have a package created. I'll be using the second method. I'll browse to the location where this package is and I will select the folder. I'll click on open and I'll click on finish. As I click on finish, it will give me a push deployment wizard that has two windows. Now the window on the left side, this window will show us the computers in your network, the domain, the work group and further computers under that. And on the right side window, which is blank as of now, will show the computers, those are added on which we need to deploy a semantic endpoint protection client. So I'll expand Microsoft Windows Network where we have all our computers. We have different work groups, different domains in our test labs. So I'll select the domain where I have my computer listed. I'll click on my computer name and I'll click on add. Once I click on add, it will ask for an authentication. So I need to give it a name that can be authenticated over that computer and the password for it. So I'll enter the password and once I click on OK, the computer will be added onto the right side window. And now if I click on finish, it will start pushing this package onto that computer. And once that is 100% done, 
it will start installation on this remote computer. There are different methods of adding a computer onto the right side window. So one method is to just click on the computer name, click on add. If I know the IP address and I want to add only single computer or maybe multiple computers, I can use the different method that's called add or import computers. I'll specify the IP address of this machine and I'll click on add. Once I click on add, it will be added to the computers list. And once I click on OK, it will move to the right side window. The other method is I can have the computer name. I can click on add. It will be added. And the third way is I can have a text file that has the list of computers, either the name or the IP address of those computers in it, one per line. And I can use that file to add the computers in this list. Now we'll move to the second method. So the second method is find unmanaged computers, which is inside the semantic endpoint protection managers clients tab. Now I'll show you how we can use this method. This also gets installed with semantic endpoint protection manager. We'll move to the test machine. Now we are on the test machine and I will log in to the console. Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager console. So I'm logged into the console to go to the find unmanaged computers method. I'll click on clients tab and towards the very bottom, we have that option called find unmanaged computers. I'll click on that and it will open a new window, which has different options in there. The criteria is search by I can either use the IP range. I can either use a computer name after entering the IP range or the computer name. I need to specify the login credentials and that will be the administrator username and password. Then the domain name or the work group, whatever you're using in there. Once that is done, I'll click on search. So to show you, I'll be using the same machine. This is my test machine because I'll be searching for one computer. So in both the boxes, I'll be specifying the same IP address. I'll type the username. I'll type the password. And after the password, I'll type the work group name. Now I click on search now and it will start searching for the computer in the network. We see two tabs in here. One says unmanaged computers and the other one says unknown computers. So which all computers will be listed under unmanaged computers and which computers will be listed under unknown computers? This is a question here. The computers on which SMB login will pass will come under unmanaged computers. The computers on which we will have semantic endpoint protection installed, but it is not managed these computers will come under unmanaged computers. The computers on which there is no antivirus and SMB login passes, those computers will also come under unmanaged computers. The computers on which SMB login fails, those computers or the network devices will come under unknown computers. The example for unknown computers would be network printer, scanner, network camera and any other uh, such device. As we can see that the machine that we searched for is under unmanaged computer. So that means the SMB login passed for this computer and we have this machine listed in here. After this, we can select this machine and towards the bottom where it has installation settings, we have further options for only Windows computers. We can choose which type of uh, client package we want to be pushed onto this machine. It can be 32 bit package or a 64 bit package. We can have uh, different type of settings. As of now, it is the default setting that will be unattended setting in which no user interaction is required. Installation will be shown on the user screen. Also, when the installation is done on the computer, it will give us a prompt if we want to restart the computer or we want to delay the restart 
After that, we can choose features. We can go with all features of semantic endpoint protection. We can only have antivirus and anti-spyware. We can have only network threat protection or we can choose antivirus, anti-spyware and true scan, proactive threat scan. Then we can choose between computer mode and user mode. And finally, we can choose in which group this computer should report to once the installation is done. Once I click on start installation, it will start pushing the package onto that remote computer. So this is all about the find unmanaged computers option. And now we will move to the third method. And the third method is push deployment wizard for remote site deployment. By remote site deployment, I mean to say that a site that does not have semantic endpoint protection manager installed over there, we use this method. Now the question is, where will I find the files or where will I find the setup for this method? So these files can be located in the CD for semantic endpoint protection. Under tools folder, there is a folder called push deployment wizard. That folder contains all the required files. Those will be used for this method. If you don't have the CD, then also you can locate these files under the installed semantic endpoint protection manager. So now I'll show you from where you can pick up these files. So we'll move to the test machine again. We are on the test machine and now I'll go to the installation folder of semantic endpoint protection manager. That will be my computer, C drive, program files, semantic, semantic endpoint protection manager. Now in here we need to go into the Tomcat folder. In Tomcat folder we have a folder called bin. These files are located in the bin folder and the files those will be required are client remote.exe, client remote res.dll and vp remote.exe. So we will copy these files and we will put these files into a folder. So I have a folder created here with the name push deployment and these files are in there. Now I can take these files or the folder in a flash drive or in a CD with the package to a remote site and I can run the client remote.exe file and I'll get this welcome screen. I can browse to the package. I have that package in my documents. I can also specify the number, maximum number of concurrent deployments. So as of now it is 10. This can be changed. So I'll click on next. And now I have the same window that we saw in the first method that was uh, migration and deployment window so all other options will remain same in here that's about the uh, push deployment method for remote site deployment 